Well, I hope you're enjoying the KNX Dialogue series so far. And for our next guest, we have as speakers Michael Critchfield, who is product manager at KNX Association, and special guest Torben Lederman, who is the who is a influencer, an electrician. He's on YouTube and is joining us today. We're going to be talking about ETS includes KNX IoT. What does that mean? But before we get there, I think Michael, you should really talk, you know, about how we got to KNX in the first place because it's a path, isn't it? It's a journey. There are destinations along the way. Yes, indeed. I guess we all have a start with KNX. For me, it started uh, almost 20 years ago now when I did my apprenticeship and uh, first got into touch with KNX. Yes. I'm not sure about you, Tom. I think you had a similar yeah, story. Crazy. So it's basically the same, but uh, not as long. So I also came in contact during my apprenticeship with, with KNX and then yeah, later on um, had even more projects uh, surrounding KNX and building automation in general. And yeah, in the last two, three years, I started the YouTube channel where I also talk about the topic of building, uh, building automation and their special uh, about uh, KNX. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you also experienced the need and the benefits of KNX, like I did all those years ago. I did indeed went into a different direction early on, but I came back to KNX, and uh, I guess that speaks for itself. Yeah, it's hard to resist. Yes, <laughs> hard to resist, and and the, and the benefits are there. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, if you're talking about building automation, you you come back to KNX. This is this is the the point of it and that but but from that you know the years that we spent in knx you know you know now we're starting to shift you know and including and encompassing knx iot but what what made you confront or brought you into the knx iot bar well what what brought me of course is primarily the development of, of ets uh, naturally so the knx association with with the manufacturers we specified knx iot and as the product manager of course the tool ets it needs to support knx iot um, so that the installers can benefit from all of that um, but i see a great benefit from having this extended tool set now right that's what i see it as uh, knx iot is is another tool in the installers in the system integrators toolbox of integrating devices, um, making sure everything is interconnected. Yeah, I think for me, when I came into contact with KNX IoT was first of all personal interest because it's really a complex field of building automation because normally you don't just have the the knx protocol you might have also other devices which talk with other protocols and so when i first heard about knx iot it was for me like hey maybe this is the possibility to reduce this complexity to simply work with one protocol and one tool in the end yeah yeah I do have a, a heat pump in my house. Um, that heat pump does not have KNX IoT. It does not have KNX even, um, but it's from a well-known brand. And the heat pump has a lot of analog inputs and outputs. Um, and I, I got onto that journey of integration when I noticed that the heat pump isn't running uh, optimized. It isn't even running when I think it should be, and it is running when I think it shouldn't be. So. It became interesting to me to integrate that heat pump into KNX. And finally, I succeeded. There is gateways for for these devices, but with something like KNX IoT, I think that integration could have been much much simpler. Um, and I could have maybe seen that wrong uh, operation of that heat pump maybe earlier. So that's where KNX and KNX IoT for me are very very beneficial. Um, integration hell. Uh, we can maybe call it. <laughs> yes. And, and if, if I can ask Torben, just, I should have probably asked sooner, but you know, in terms of YouTube, who is your audience? You know, who, who's watching what you're doing? 
Oh, the audience is a, a big variety of different uh, yeah, people. There are electricians in Germany who watch the channel, but there are also people who have KNX at their home and simply want to optimize it or want to add a few new functions, etc. So really, the channel is for everyone that is interested in, in building automation. And this is also the audience of the channel. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. You know, it's so helpful to have that, isn't it, Michael? Yeah, it is indeed. Um, I think, Tom, I commented to you before um, how how very much I appreciate your videos. Uh, you did a video some time ago about the difference between an IP interface and an IP router, and mm -hmm. it's these these technical differences that that need to be known, um, and that every device has specific aspects specific use cases um, we now have segment couplers and we are speaking about security proxies and i think these devices they they are crucial for extending an installation but of course as a as a system integrator you need to understand what these devices do and so youtube videos like yours they help telling that story i think very very well yeah, absolutely. First of all, thank you. And um, yeah, th those those videos are yeah the, the the topic of those videos come from yeah the the personal pain that I have sometimes so or the errors that I run into and therefore those those videos shall help the people that uh, they don't run into the same um, yeah mistakes for example. Yeah. Yeah, I th I think we we talk about the pain of integration, but we on the other side we also have to say it's the joy of actually finally integrating that that balances out that pain of uh, of problems you know oh, along yeah. the way. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. indeed. Yeah. It's great to see when it then works and everything is fine and and you can tell your. Either if it's your own building, you know, or if it's a customer's building, you know that for the next few years, uh, certainly um, there's there's safety and there's security and there's operational stability. And that's very, very uh, important. Yeah, yeah I, I think your story, Michael, about your, your heat pump, you know, is probably something Torben is addressing in the sense of we're, we've moved from this standalone, every device standing on its own in an analog way. And now it seems so archaic to, to bump into anything that's standing on its own when connectivity is the main issue. So probably, Torben, a lot of your discussion these days are about the connectivity issues. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's in, in normally in a building, we already have all the informations that we need. The, the heat pump knows its states, its knows, um, its errors, etc. But the, the real, yeah, um, the real problem in the end is how do we get those informations into, like, for example, in this case, KNX. So I think this is at the moment the biggest, or let's say the biggest, um, yeah, challenge, I would say. Yeah, yeah. And for me, even KNX, finally, after I had, I had integrated my heat pump, it even became apparent that my heat pump was not running optimally. So it actually had software software errors that I could then prove to the manufacturer of that heat pump. So that's where KNX then allowed me to do that. But first, the integration, and, yeah. The integration. Well, let's talk for a second about ETS it, itself, Michael, and, and yes. how you know, it's used in the community that might be worthwhile here. Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, yeah. We have ETS 6 now, right? We have had that for right. uh, two years, two, almost three years now. Um, and ETS 6 comes with a lot of, lot of extensions. Uh, the the KNX system was extended heavily. We have now a very, very um, strong KNX secure. We have, I said that before, we have segment couplers, we have security proxies, we have RF multi devices, we have KNX, KNX IoT, and all these things want to be integrated. And of course, ETS6 is the tool to do that. Um, at the same time, with all that, let's say, with all these technically difficult solutions, ETS 6 then shall be the solution to do that safely and, and easily um, to hide that complexity a little bit from the user and automate more of it 
so the user doesn't get doesn't have to get in touch with that complexity. I'm sure the users really appreciate that <laughs> because I, I on the YouTube two, channel you fronts, hear that yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's two fronts, of course. Um, the the beginners they appreciate that these these new features, these additional features, making things easier. But of course, ETS six changes also a lot of workflows, and every change breaks somebody's workflow. And then we, of course, aware we are aware of that as well. Right. But what I've really found interesting, I, I took a look at, at KNX IoT at the, the Lighten building. And mm -hmm. in the end, KNX IoT, for me as a system integrator, really just is another communication media type. So, so the workflow to integrate a KNX IoT device, even though we are talking about IPv6 addresses, thread, etc., the the workflow in the EDS itself stays the same. Stays the same, yeah. Yeah, what I was referring to is, for example, the download via serial number, right? Historically, you are used to pressing programming buttons, but now with, especially with KNX Secure, you don't really even have to do that anymore. And of course, the same applies for KNX IoT. Um, there's no programming button you need to press uh, at first necessarily. Yeah, yeah, it's just another medium type, indeed. Yeah, the serial number just saved me yesterday when I programmed a new device, so I didn't have to to run through the whole building just to press this uh, the the programming button. So really, a nice yeah. feature that was added. Yeah, see, you added one device, um, but the same holds true for if you, or maybe even more importantly, if you add hundreds or thousands of new Absolutely. devices in a new installation. Yeah, yeah. Either way, it's it's a big helper, a big time saver. And I think that's really what people want to hear is how do you make my life easier, either as an installer or as a user and, or a building owner? You know, and how do you, yeah. you know, uh, provide more value? And, and are you moving into the future? That's the nice thing about the story is that, you know, again, you have a legacy of so many years, but what you've done in the last three years is an acceleration into the future. And, and, yes. And, yeah and extremely important to people. Indeed, and, and speaking of that legacy, good good for you to bring that up, Bob, is that, of course, in ETS6, we also have the project comparison. So speaking of a legacy project, let's say you find an older version of a project and you wonder what has changed in that, what has changed since then also. ETS6 has that comparison version, so you can compare two versions of a project, you can compare what has been made, what has been changed in that project. And I think that helps also Torben and, and uh, other users keeping track of these changes. Yeah, absolutely. And also in combination with the, um, with the, the ETS archive, this is also oh, yeah. a great yeah, tool for, for teams. So when multiple people work on the same project, in, in, in the history, I often had the, the problem that you didn't really know who now has the current project because there might be three or four projects all with the name current. And uh, yeah. so with this tool, I can yeah, really two. see, yeah, version two, version new. <laughs> and yeah. so with this, I can easily see which really is the current or the new project. Yeah. And not only prevent conflicts, because we know conflicts will happen, um, but also then see, visualize these conflicts and see what yeah. the differences are and how to get out of that situation. Yeah. That's what we call collaboration mode in the archive. Indeed, it shows you that uh, status of the project. Yeah. And it's all built into wow. ETS. Yeah. Gentlemen, and, you know, we're running out of time. You know, so I, I just wanted to swing back and offer you one last closing statement before we finish here. So, Michael, as the product manager, you know, ETS includes KNX. What does it mean? I believe with ETS 6 and with ETS now including KNX IoT, I think that statement is more true than ever that KNX brings peace of mind, um, not only to the installer but also to manufacturers to installers to building owners 
to users, to inhabitants of the building. And so it's peace of mind for me. Okay. And, and Torben, you, you've had a special journey <laughs> into KNX, you know, and, and just in, in summation, you know, uh, again, your audience turns to you for KNX device, you know, advice and, and help in that. And maybe you can just mention how you feel that the integration into KNX IoT has been helpful. Well, I think, or my hope for the future due to the integration of KNX IoT is to simply reduce the complexity in building automation so that in future it will be much easier to integrate, for example, heating pumps or also other devices which currently aren't really there in KNX or don't have an easy integration into KNX. So this is my yeah hope for the future. We Wonderful. can be on the lookout for those. Yeah. 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 Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. And I'd like to thank you for helping our audience learn about the integration of KNX IoT into ETS and what it means for the future of smart systems. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining this KNX dialogue series. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Bob. Thank you very much.